Wow! Music from a time that is actually just a little bit ahead of my time, but I've always loved the 30s and the 40s in America because even though there was a lot of bad things still going on, at least it was, you didn't know about it, right? It was underground, there were things that were going on, and now when it comes to things like Fomorio, sometimes we get a little, oh, nostalgic. And that's why we're starting out today with some music from the 1930s, correct? Yeah. And they are whom? Uh, let's see. This is Anne Southern, Jack Haley, Roger Pryor, in a poster for a movie called The Girlfriend. Yeah, I, I think I actually saw that movie once through Michael's eyes. That was a long time ago. I, uh -huh. I, I You know, it's one of those things you kind of... You know, see on Turner Broadcasting. Remember Turner Broadcasting? Yes. I think they're still around. But uh, we, we wanted to introduce this stuff because this is sort of the lighter side of things because we're talking about Fomoria. And we're talking about an interesting story, and Victoria's going to get to ask some questions to two amazing people, uh, if you want to call them people. They're actually. They're Fomorians. They're Fomorians, really. I, I guess the mm -hmm. term people is a generic term we'll use discussing, you know, other other beings, but we should probably say being would be a better term. We're gonna be talking today to JJ and Arissa. Now, JJ, who wants to be known for this recording as just JJ, and I understand why. Um but it, it does kind of relate to his name. So, uh, JJ was here on Terra. And about 1935, I, I believe part of the story went like this. He was with several friends. Mm -hmm. And they literally were driving a Chevrolet at the mm -hmm. time. One of the first few ones that came out. Down to guess where? Tell us. Well, think about it. The song, do you remember? Drove the Chevy to the levee. Well, anyhow, I thought maybe you'd pick up on that. Uh, no, she's, that's the problem with people from Australia. They, they don't have the nostalgia necessary. Huh, I grew up with Holdens, okay? Yeah, I know. What the hell is that? Most people would be like, what the hell are you talking about? But I'll tell you what, if you had a Holden today, you'd be a millionaire. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, some of those, Holden, aren't that... they amazing? Some of the cars and stuff. Seriously, yeah. But anyway... But, but anyway, Victoria's going to ask a bunch of questions. Now, um, he's going to remind everybody that, as far as he recalls, he was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. That's what he said. Uh, there was also another super soldier who was born in Boise, Idaho, that we may talk to at some point. Okay. But I thought you'd like you'd enjoy this, and, and obviously Michael's going to do his best to channel all this. Poor guy is going to need a throat lozenge when he's done with some of that stuff. But, but we wanted to, you guys to understand that uh, these beings have lived amazing lives. And when you talk to them, if, if some of this information doesn't blow you away, I, I think that probably uh, you need to think more about what is going on in this universe. Yeah. And super soldiers are a real big part of it. Uh -huh. Although we do know that some are being used to deceive you. Yeah like some of the recordings that you might hear on places like Super Soldier Talk, although I do tend to believe most of what you're hearing there are actual channelings and actual understandings from other beings that are sometimes speaking even through some of these Super Soldiers, and that's a whole other story. And uh, if you want to really get a good feel for the whole Super Soldier thing before Victoria does the interview, uh, at some point you might want to check out, was it Max Spires? Yeah. I mean, this was the definition of super soldier, this guy. And his story will absolutely blow you away. Of course, people called him a fake until he ended up coughing up black goo in the hospital and yeah. dying after they warned him they were going to kill him if he didn't shut his mouth. Right? But that's what they do on this planet. This is what they do. We know all about it. So, Victoria, uh, JJ, and Arissa are both going to say hello. They're standing by here. They're in the Fomorian courtyard, you know, where oh, the flowers oh, are and the crystals. The, they call them the calm crystals, but basically if you can envision beautiful, gigantic flowers, 
uh, and they have some of them are embedded with crystalline growths uh, that have been attuned to some of the communications networking that's been done on Fomoria. And that's a whole other story. And guess who we're going to talk to about that someday? Her name is, you guessed it, Crystal. Yeah, she's one of our beautiful dragons. So, are we ready to do this now? Uh, hello, Eridil. Hi. It's actually an amazing honor to talk to you. Oh, thanks a lot. I've talked to you and Arissa before and Briefly, um, yes, and actually we're together because of you. That's right. I actually played matchmaker with the two of them and it's just worked out because you got a little boy now, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we're we're gonna not speak too much about that just now. Right. Um but later we can if everyone's comfortable with that. Um I was told that you wanted to ask us some questions. Yeah. Um Arissa is also right here too. Hi, and, sweetie. Uh, hello. Hi. How you doing? Um, Aerodeal? Yeah. Is is that the title we're supposed to use for this? Yes, darling. Okay. Um, hi. It, it's hard for me to even say anything because I, I'm not supposed to say certain things just yet. And, right. But um, it, it's it's a big honor for me to talk to Aerodeal. It, it's a big big deal for us. I just like it, that. It just, it means a lot, and I just yeah. wanted to say thank you, because you know why. I know. Thank you, and thank you for helping bringing us together. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to ask JJ, first of all, what do you remember about your life on Terra? Well, I remember, actually, my father was a professor, and oh. I lived in a, a pretty nice home in the suburbs and I had a pretty good upbringing I, I couldn't complain my father was involved in some research huh. and he was also reporting to the government mm. uh, a lot of us have a similar story like this yes what happened was without getting in too much detail because I don't there are still family members of mine that are alive on Terra, and they have been through a lot, and they've been through a lot. And let's just say my my father spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C. He also worked and was involved in certain types of contracting for advanced technologies. And at this time, well, obviously this was before this whole... Um, Oh gosh, you call it Roswell yeah. incident? Because, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, Terrans are unaware, but there have been non-terrestrials, I think is the term you want to use, that have been coming to Terra since the dawn of time. Exactly. And to not believe that is arrogant and mm -hmm. foolish, because many Terrans are simply just... I, I, for lack of a better term, brain dead? <laughs> is, is that too harsh? I don't know. I know there are a lot of good people that are still left, and if that's the right word, people. Um, because we know there are many automatons that exist yeah. on your world that are not only pretending to be humanoids and humans, but are also run by artificial intelligence and off-world intelligences. Yes. Now, um, you were, we're not going to go into great details, but when did you hear about Fomoria? Because you had lived quite a life between Fomoria and as a super soldier. So tell me from the time that you connected as a super soldier and where this went. You were dragged kind of into this through your family? Uh, I will actually have to back up first um, and mention how I became a super soldier. Okay. Because that needs to be understood yeah. before I can move forward because it characterizes everything I do. Yeah. My father, along with many other fathers that were involved in these kind of governmental projects, the earlier projects before 
the other shadow projects started. We can talk about some of those if you wish. Literally sold me to the non-terrestrials for power, rank. He justified it by telling me that I would have an amazing life. And I guess he was right. Yeah. However, no one ever loves being sold by their parents. And I was taken off world. Initially, I was taken to a place similar to what you have in Mars, uh, which is actually more of a planetoid, really, than a full circular planet. It's like this flat place. Um, and where I was taken, there were other children like me. There were at least, at the time, there was at least 50 of us that started our initial training. Seven of us finished. The rest of us, the rest of them, if you want to say them, the rest of all of my classmates were either sold off because they couldn't pass certain criteria. I know some of them ended up on the dinner tables of uh, our overlords yeah. and our instructors because they had a fondness for children, oh. a, a big fondness for children. And as you know, well, Terra is one of the biggest suppliers in this quadrant of the galaxy of children. Children are used for all kinds of things. They're a currency. And I know I, I've heard your husband talk about it before, that currencies in, in the universe are not just credits. They're not just paper money. Currency goes beyond and it, it affects everything around you because some of the currency you need to collect are living sentient beings and they're exchanged and, and retain value even to this point and probably won't change for a very long time. Even though our grand creator is trying very, very hard to fix things that are going on in your quadrant of the galaxy to restore the great archives and the great school back, which is Terra. This was to be a wondrous paradise that people from all over the multiverse would come to to learn and exchange and experience. And we know that that's what Father has intended for the future. Yes. It's so wonderful to hear this coming from another Terran who is now on a planet I am also connected to. The link and the, the energy, it's wonderful. <clears throat> So, when you found out about Fomoria, because obviously you've seen a lot over the many years. We've worked <clears throat> for some of the deeper, deeper aspects of what you would call the Dark Fleet. Yeah. And we were physically recruited upon our graduation. We had a choice. Uh, of different types of service and of course they they wanted us and they offered us all kinds of things saying that you know help us to achieve our goals and you will be building a life for yourself because there are others that did a tour of duty they would do a 20-year tour of duty mm -hmm. sometimes they would do 30 or 40 years depending on you know how long they felt they could endure it and then they would be age regressed back to a certain point yeah. and or in some cases portals would be open and they would be allowed to step back in time and replace the current concept of themselves that existed because I want people to understand something. The world that you live in, the world that we live in is vastly different. Vastly different because work, we were able to change bodies pretty much weekly different types of bodies. We were even given projected bodies like I know m your husband has mentioned um, the movie Avatar. We it, we knew about this. We yes. heard about this in, because some of the things that you saw in Avatar were real. Yes. Uh, most of the sets were real mm -hmm. um, and, and they actually I think of the money they saved by using real sets um, where they would actually go to an area and some of it would be set, but the majority of it would be filmed on different types of some of the uh, 
um, dreadnought ships that we would often be part of, but Fomoria. <laughs> and I still think there's much more to be said. Father, our creator, and, and Fomorians all love Father, and, and the world of Fomoria is based around Father. Yes. If you could imagine again a world like Avatar where yes. everything grows wildly and there's abundance of things that the, the very, the most beautiful parts, well, they take my breath away. Mm -hmm. They And they still do. And of course, Arissa takes my breath away. But that's even another story. I, I, I just I wanted you to understand that it is such an amazing place. And Father talked about Fomoria for many, many years, and he we would actually dream about Fomoria. We didn't know at the time. I was, and it was the only thing we had as soldiers because our lives were constantly involved in ops and things going on in the world yeah. uh, uh, that you couldn't even imagine that we had to siege whole planets and, and I remember great ships on fire and wars that would span centuries. Many of us have been alive for thousands of years yes. engaged in deep and grim warfare that exists beyond the very edge of your galaxies that entire imagine entire solar systems on fire uh -huh. worlds colliding uh, your movies don't even do it justice your star wars your 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 other movies that that show science fiction don't even do it justice i don't even know if you could understand the horrors that exist in the deepest darkest of, of these galaxies, it, it, vast oceans of evil beings seething, ready to spread across the multiverse yes. and consume everything they see, like locusts. And all the Terrans hear is the fluff. They don't hear the truth. You so know nothing on this planet. Nothing. On this planet here, Terra, you know nothing. They've kept you ignorant because they only view you as crops. They want you to only think a certain way, but they use you in every way conceivable that you can imagine. You have to give it to them for their creativity. Oh, I do. I, hands down, they're very clever. So Father told us, and he gave us dreams. They were the only dreams we had. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with us. <laughs> They wanted to know why we were dreaming. You shouldn't be dreaming. We have control of your thoughts. Mm. But Father, it was Father who told us about Fomoria. He said, you must come. You must come, my children. I want you to meet my other children. Yeah. And they will love you. And they will bear children. And they told you you couldn't reproduce. And they told you that you didn't deserve a life of your own. But I am the creator of all things. And I say to you, an amazing future awaits you. Flee from the darkness. Come into the light. And it was there that I saw Melissa's face. <laughs> so you ask me, and I can't even speak the words that I truly wish to speak to Eridil for my deepest gratitude when she brought us together. And it was her blessing that restored my faith and all of the goodness and that Father truly can do anything. Yeah. That is the creator I serve. And they ask me if you can trust us now. We have been given our lives back, a new citizenship. Our wives are among some of the most faithful, intelligent, and beautiful feminine women. 
females <laughs> in in the universe that we're going to craft children that will further expand the goodness of Father. Yeah. And it is the Fomorian way that is going to save the universe. I'm so proud of you. You've come so far. We have thousands mm -hmm. of former super soldiers now. Thank you, Eridil. Who live on Fomoria. Who know what's going on here on this planet. And they're trying to warn their brothers, their other brothers. They're trying to warn you, the Terrans. Someday we will come and free you if and when Father decides. We will be part of it, I believe. But that is just the beginning of our story. Oh. Now we live on a planet that's filled with love and light. Our future is beyond amazing. Mm. As we look to the stars for Father's guidance for the future, we know that we will make a difference in bringing light to every corner of the galaxy. Absolutely. And that is my faith. Jason is okay. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. Oh, you made me cry, but you're beautiful. Thank you. We're, we're very sorry. We just wanted you to know how happy we are. Good, it was. I'm, I'm it so proud of you too. He's so amazing. That's yeah. right, sweetheart. I'm so glad to be in service to him. And I look forward to the day that not only will our children reach out into the future, but all of Fomoria, because there is a wellspring here that cannot be found anywhere else that I've ever seen. And what do you guys think about having some of the ancient goddesses protecting and guarding Fomoria? We're what very is... deeply grateful, even the ones that are recycling now, yes. that have gone back to being children again. Yes. Because that's a very important part to Father, that before he gives you your greatest assignment, he wants you to be a child again for a time. Because he says, that is how you should come to me, as a broken child. And believe me, we're all broken children. We're and all Father, broken. I don't know what else to say. Uh, Fomoria is such a beautiful world. And if you guys have ever wondered, that's where I'm going when all is said and done. I'm going home. So these are my kin. These are my people. And we can't wait for you to come. I know. I can't she wait has a to whole come world home. waiting for her. And we think of her as our fairy mother. That's what we think of her as. I know. There's probably those of you that think this is not real. And I've heard other beings say that to her. But yet, ask yourself deep in your heart and mind and soul, you know what we say is true. And we love you too, and we cannot wait to see our ancient brothers and sisters from Terra. Fomoria will be open to you someday. Yes. And you will have an invite from us. And that's what I wanted to say today. Thank you, darling. That was just... You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're not trying to make anything up. I, it's just, it is what it is. It and, is what it is. And I wish they, I hope they believe for their own heart's sake. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this. Even if you don't think that this is actually happening, if you take a look at what's happening on Terra, it's a nightmare. We're offering you something beautiful as the complete opposite of what you currently know. So does it hurt to just allow your childlike imagination to come forward? You have to reach out for it. You've got to touch you, you it. You just can't stay there and, and just doubt everything. You have to reach out for good things. Yeah. That's what's going to make your lives all better. So before we go, I want to tell my sister Melzi, she's She's up soon, too, because she and I have a story to tell. Oh, my goodness. That's going to be another whole story. That'll be a gas, <laughs> won't it? Oh, my gosh. My beautiful sister. Wait until you hear really hear our story, boy. You think you're cuckoo <laughs> now. Where's Opie? Opie, you got to get in on Hi, this. yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Oh, and 
congratulations, sweetie. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to close it to now because we've been on for, goodness, about 25 minutes. And thank you so much, JJ and Elisa. Thank you very much for allowing us the opportunity to speak. And um, uh, thank you. It, it really helps sometimes to talk about these things. It took a long time, but passing through Father's Grove, uh, becoming attuned again, Father removed things from us that shouldn't ever have been able to be removed yeah. and cleansed our bodies and gave us natural strength and abilities that exceed any technological device. Mm -hmm. And you better believe we protect Fomoria. It absolutely is our life now. And there are several are we allowed to say? There yes, are there yes. are many of us now on Several Fomora. thousand super soldiers, and some of the toughest in the galaxy, now living on Fomoria and having wonderful lives. We are now citizens. We never were before. We were just property before. Exactly. They're and free men now. Yes. Well, some of us are half Lyrans. We should talk about our Lyran yes. brothers at some point. Maybe another one of yes. these. Yes. They've this been is very, through it too. very therapeutic. Thank you. Very <laughs> deal. No, thank you. It's been amazing. Bye, everyone. Boy, oh boy. This is Stephen A. Jones saying, we warned you. And it's just starting with the Fomorian archives. Uh, we really hope you enjoy this today, especially, uh, I believe, today is Sunday. But whoever's listening on whatever day, we wanted to say thank you. And we promise you that we are speaking what is a very beautiful and loving truth to you. Whether you choose to believe it or not is always up to you. But I say, and I always mean, blessings, love and light.